All right. Long awaited, at least for me, um, review of Edifier S2000 Pros, Swan M200 Mark Threes. Not the Mark Twos. Those are a cheaper variant. You can look them up. They have a slightly smaller driver and they're not real wood on the side. Now, because it's taking so long to set this up and get it perfect, I will be talking about the build and what's on the backs of these powered monitors. Because these are self-powered monitors. Not like the Mackies that have an amplifier in each. These have one side powered and then a line that runs to the passive side. And I'll be looked at at the end of the video. So using the big knob, the Mackie big knob, by the way, to feed both monitors because I can pick and choose and dim and everything else with it, which is great. Now, uh, most of you have an attention span on these videos about five minutes. That's my average watch time. So I'm going to try to get as much information as I can out in the first five. The ones who stick to the end, you're my guys or girls. There are girls who watch this channel. I know that. Um, these are some of the prettiest speakers. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'm going to pull them out. We're going to actually have a look at the actual wood. Because I, I think th this uses cherry and this uses like, like the teak. Or I, I'll have to look it up. So it's a real wood. The, they're the only speakers. There's very few speakers. But these are some of the only speakers that when you take the grills off... Uh, and the edifiers uh, fight it uh, they actually look worse than when you leave them on why can't all speaker manufacturers figure this out because i like leaving these on it means the cat can't put her asshole literally against the speaker and little kids have a much harder time poking at things although you wouldn't see i'll leave these off for a second so we can look at the drivers they're both five and a quarter Although the swans here, which by the way, for people taking note, when A is playing, that's the swans. When B is playing, that's the edifiers. So if you can actually note that, I'm not sure if the camera sees that green. That is how that works. Both five and a quarters. Although the edifiers look slightly larger. Probably an optical illusion because the surround is different. Also, this is a much thinner actual rubber surround versus the much thinner thicker one on the swan and there's dust on these because well this he also puts everything off tweeter design completely different between the two and that is notable in the sound the swans are going with a i would say normal probably one inch soft dome and it's a it's barely a waveguide just this little bit around here and then the fascia the speaker would work whereas the edifiers are just whatever the hell's in there it looks like a circular AMT. I, I, I won't even hesitate to guess what it is. All I know is it's there inside this like wind tunnel looking mother effer in a giant waveguide that is directing the sound. So you can't get more different than that, except if you had like, I don't know, something else. Are we done looking at them? They look, ugh, they look, ugh, like, ah, like that's, ah. And that's, ooh, so I'm going to put this back on. Swan logo. Very thick mesh on the swan here. So it lets you, sh it lets it, sh it's like, I can still see it. I can still see it. And then this is just pantyhose, stockings. Stocking and panty, panty, I haven't seen that show. Is it any good? Should I watch stocking and panty? Panty, I don't know. Also, the pegs remain on the face fascia of the edifiers. And the pegs are on the covers. Oh, we gotta get five minutes. Get to the damn point of the review, Z. <sighs> Those are so hard to put on. Both these speakers are worth absolutely the price of $400. These were over $400 when I got them, and the company sent me these, and then never contacted me again. In fact, they contacted me, they arrived five months later, and I forgot that they even talked to me, and they haven't said a word since. And I've been sitting on them, and I'm, I apologize, because they're fucking amazing. And the edifiers I bought with the Patreon money, Patreon link in the upper right-hand corner, because they look like they're directly competing with each other and just want a rip-off copy of the other. No one's a loser here. Are we still in the first five minutes? Neither one of these speakers is bad. I'm not going to point to this one and say, don't get this one, get this one instead, or don't get this one, get this one instead, or just buy the swans, or you know, forget the edifiers and buy the swans because the swans sound better. I'm not going to say any of that. 
but we're going to get to the edifiers and you're going to understand you have to make a choice. There's a choice to be made. If you buy either one of these, you're a smart human being. I congratulate you. I'll print out a certificate and hand it to you. You're going to ask in the comments, because I'm going to get to it now. Remember, first five minutes. Well, what about the Mackies that you love so much? Yes, studio monitors, the Mackies are great. Listen to music, the Mackies are great. But they are still full-blown studio monitors. They have no grills. They are the sexiest studio monitors, which almost gives them some sex appeal. There they are up there. Look at them being sexy. And I'm keeping those, and those will come out when I need a set of studio monitors that requires left and right power and left and right signal, and you, need, you definitely need something like the big knob to control it. These have different roles in society. I mean, we, we should... All right. The edifiers are going to end up in a yard sale. Not because I don't love them, but because I think they're going to be more useful to more people, and that means more people will bid on it, and that means I can get out of the box out of my house. I'm keeping the swans, because I sort of fell in love with the swans, and... I'm pretty much crowning them as my favorite speaker. Now listen to what I said. No, 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 I'm not. Best speaker of all time is you saying shit again. No, no, stop. I'm not playing those games like I did with the, with the JBL, which by the way, look at those 530s powered by the phase linear. As a whole package, as a delivered, unboxed, the look, the sound, what I want, the sheer simplicity of it, these swans are my favorite speaker. They came in individual bags with the swan logo on them. Okay, we've got swan logoed bags. Here's two of those. So that you could, I mean, I, I, what do I do with these bags now? I've actually put them back in the bags because I'm like, well, they came with beautiful bags. Let's put them back in there. They came with this 3.5 millimeter to RCA because there's an RCA connection. It can't, and this is one of the nicest, like robust, what does it actually say? It says show seal OFC, which means auction free copper audio video, great high grade cable. And it is one of the nicest cables that something has come with to the point where these have been around for like seven months. And I've made sure I've kept this cable with these bags because I got to show this off. Here's the book from the swans, all right? Book, the first part's in Chinese because Hai Vai Swan, if you don't know who Hai Vai Swan is, pause this video, do some research. Come back and then you'll know that they're a Chinese company, like Audio God is a Chinese company and they give a shit. Anyway, look at this. It's talking about setup and how you wanna have them placed and you'll have them facing you and look at this chart of this dude and he's just, look how excited he is. And he's exactly 0.7 meters away from the screen. And that puts the end of his desk 0.3 meters away from, from his fucking ear. And then a 10 degree angle and the height from the floor. This is very fucking specific. And you know how you, you know when I really knew that the, that the swans were different than like every other speaker that gets sent? When I pulled these actual measurement graphs that the company took and printed out one for this speaker and one for this speaker to show you how linear they are. These are, they're not the same. I've held them up. It's not like they just photocopy these and put them in. If you hold them up, they're slightly different because that's how graphs work. They're never perfect. And there's just a little variations here, unless they're just printing out 200 different slight copies and said, yeah, whatever, throw them in the box. I don't think so because I'm gonna suck these speakers dicks I'm gonna go buy a dick speaker dick and I'm gonna stick it on there and I'm just gonna suck it on camera and this didn't hurt that's the lube and this thing and these things now it's zero views but the edifiers so I, I, I fell in love with these like I had them and I put them up and they were my computer speakers the only speakers I put over there for four months that was it. I was done. I was done looking for computers. <laughs> my speakers are done. These were set up in my living room for a while as my center channel. And if you ever watch me rant about home theater, you'll know. In 
this world. Queen, by the way. Of cool deception. Let's meet that. If you know anything about me and home theater and center channels, as I tell you, basically, you have two choices. You either put the most fucking monstrous, can handle everything happening on screen center channel in to match your, your, your setup, or you don't put a center channel in. My surround sound in the living room does not have a center channel because I've got, you know, a subwoofer stand with monster speakers or ohm walshes. I've got monster left and rights. And when you add a center, you take the responsibility, which if you're going phantom center is the whole front of your thing is two things. If you add a center, you've moved all the responsibility to the center, basically. The left and right still do some explosions and they do some soundtrack stuff. But every bit of dialogue, all the gunshots that happen on screen should all be happening through your center channel. And when I put my fireplace in, my little electric fireplace, I did that for, for aesthetic. I am full aesthetic. But it prevents me from putting a center channel in. And I'm okay with that because I would end up building a center channel that looks like, well, there it is. There's my center channel. That whole thing, I just squeeze it together and carry it in and drop it in front of my fireplace now and lower the projection screen. But these were so good that I actually wired them up to my center channel because I have a pre-out on my receiver. You can't normally put powered monitors on a center channel, but I can. So I did. And I left those there for three weeks. So all the dialogue, all the gunshots, all the important stuff happening in a movie or a show or any... These. These. That's That was the first occurrence of that and I've done it since then I've, I've tried it out actually with the edifiers which is a little more tricky because they have a remote and they have all sorts of different digital knobs I've tried it with the did I do it with the Mackies whatever point is these impressed the shit out of me and there's um let me think of how to put this I don't know how loud these get I don't know how loud these get because when I put them on and something ooh, that looks Corn Adidas. We all know that song. So let's just unmute it. You can't tell how loud it's on because the GoPro will squelch. That's why it can be put on F1 cars. The GoPro will constantly just keep lowering it. So it'll sound the same to you. But if I keep talking at this constant volume and raise this thing over and over, how fucking loud those speakers are. I put them in my centers as my center because I don't know how, I don't know where they end. I kept running out of volume knobs to turn up. I had plus eight on my receiver and I had the go rack in the middle and I was like, all right, let's 99 with that. Let's turn this up all the way. Then at one point I got the goddamn Burson cable pluses that they sent me, the ones that boost six decibels of signal. And I put those in line and I just can't, they get so fucking loud and they never break up and they're always clear. So I'm like, all right, well, that's one. We'll put that a checkbox. Come with bags and checkbox. So what about the edifiers? Well, I got the edifiers thinking that these were going to be a clone of the swans. And the swans are just the originals and the best. And these are nothing to stand on on their own. And I'm wrong. And I'm fucking wrong. Whereas I love the bass that this throws, especially on a desk. And by love, I mean, this is my favorite speaker. This in a room, this in this in front of my thing, uh, connected to my phone because oh, because oh wait it um uh. come on because Bluetooth that's not this that's that's not that not not her she's not she it, it's it's um. This just set up in my living room, these, and I put them on and I'm like, that low end, how much? Fuck. Pause. Pause. The real question becomes, Vanatu T1s are these? That's the question, and that's the question that I have to fucking answer. Because I fucking love the Vanatu T1s. They're $500 a pair. They're smaller than both of these. These are both 
that they'd probably stand that tall against the, I mean, this is up on a block simply because it's a short, it is short. I just have it up on a two inch phone block to sort of get the tweeters in line for me. But, um, oh, fuck. How about this? I'm just not going to mention it and I won't answer any questions about it. That that's, that's more telling than anything. But, um, so these th these have these have what I like to call these edifiers features where they can actually do things and the swans one of the reasons I like them I personally like them is they're simple they're dumb as fuck hi baby swan I love you you're dumb as fuck edifiers here show up sound fantastic and then have features. So the choice is the choice is not easy. It's not like I'm sitting here going, well, yeah, uh, these sound better and these do more. Sitting here for the final listen, which I set up this morning, set up the big knob for Mackie so that I could, uh, let me put this back to auxiliary so that I can do this. Oh, oh, Dread OST is playing. A, B. That's backwards, and I know, but sue me. Let me tell you what I hear on this desk. And this is not the ultimate way to... The ultimate way to set it up is properly one pair at a time, listen, then tear it all down and put the next pair up, because the sounds are affecting each other because this is a, it's a like a wall here and it doesn't like it and then height and it's not quite wide and if I'm doing this and this it'd be worse if they were reversed and they were but at least I'm getting like here and center and then here and center and I'm sitting here for an hour and a half two hours just doing this The swans are my benchmark now. They're my benchmark. And the edifiers have treble and bass controls in the back. Not on the remote. I'm pointing that out now before I forget because it's, oh. I've been waiting to do this since I got them. And it's filthy. Cat hairs all over it. Yard sale people are going to have to just imagine the fire. Um, what was I saying? Shit, that distracted the hell out of me. I lost my train of thought. I was doing this. These are adorable but stupid. And then these were in my living room. And it sounded good. Wow, I can't believe I lost my whole, my whole, my whole shit. Okay, let me see if I can remind myself. Ah, sitting here. Hour and a half. Tone controls, yes. Having them right next to each other, because they've never played at the same time. I'm not, I'm, I'm crazy, but I don't have all the things set up all the time. Having them going this to this with the push of a button. As, as Using this as my benchmark, the edifiers sounded a little bit warmer. And like, the, like that tweeter, like that crazy tweeter that's doing that whole waveguide wasn't doing enough. So I fixed it. I went to the back and I turned the knob. Turned it all the way. And then I went back and forth, and I'm like, because I want him, I want everything to sound like the swans. I want everything on earth to fucking sound like the swans. Right? And if I could turn knobs until it sounds like swans, then I could become God. I'll walk around everyone's. Hold on, let me, let me, let me. Is it swans yet? Is it swans yet? And all I had to do to make these sound close as far as tonality was take the treble. And turn it up about halfway. Not all the way. All the way was too much. And just backed it down. Okay. And now we've got the same level of clarity. Where the real difference is, is depth. And I know people who don't have never experienced high-end speakers are going to have a hard time understanding depth. And I'm not talking about depth like the plot of Star Wars was so depthy and it got to my soul. No, I'm talking about physical distance up and down of what the sound is doing because 
the tonality is perfect and these make sound sound like it's coming from the back of my head and over by that wall. That's what swans can do. It's like, woo, what is fucking happening? And the edifiers don't go behind my head. The edifiers lay it all right out in front of you, which can also be all right. And I think for like a studio monitor, that's more what you get with a studio monitor is here is the sound right in front of you. Pay a fucking attention. Where these are doing some really ooh, stuff to ooh, ooh, ooh. Neither one sounds bad though. I'm getting the same chills from the songs from either one. The reason I like the swans for the desk. We should get to the sound here. Here's what you need to know about sound about both these speakers. Because if you don't only care about sound, it's going to end in about 20 seconds. Both these speakers sound way better than $400 speakers. And I know as a man who has a couple speakers up to worth, they sound like they're worth way more than $400 fucking dollars. They sound more soulful. And that's a shitty word because I know it doesn't, you can't look that up in the dictionary and sue me if I'm wrong. But these speakers sound like a man or woman, most likely a man, because China doesn't let women design speakers, I don't think design these and pick what they liked and then tweak it and then sell it. Studio monitors should be flat and you just get lucky sometimes. Those Mackies, MR6 are fucking great. I love the way they sound. Swans over those. Um, just just swans over T, T1s. Uh, um, that Those are special because of what they do, but I, it's, it's when I'm done with this review and the sound demos are already in the can, Done with this review, and it's, well, when those come off there, it's going to be like, oh, can I put the swans back yet? And I'm not. i got to put the audio engine H... HG6s? Are you eating? Hey, don't eat plastic. She's eating the plastic from the remote. Only in a Z reviews. Only in a Z reviews. <sighs> Startling imaging. Remember when I said 20 seconds for the sound? I lied. You're not losing anything in the swans versus the edifiers, but the swans do that thing where it just it just sounds almost like it's playing out of phase and behind you, and that makes the edifiers sound more detailed. So even though the the, the treble tweak had to be encountered and put on. Yeah, the, the edifiers sound much more in front of me than the swans do. The swans sound like something's just happening, and the edifiers sound like these fucking speakers are playing. So let's get to where they actually belong, because I'm never going to get to it. I haven't removed those, and I wanted to just... That was both. That was stupid, and that was both. And let's... I have, by the way, the Fleerk up there hooked up so I can change tracks with this remote. Because this remote is controlling the edifiers and it can control Bluetooth to my phone. But to control my computer up there, I have a Fleerk adapter so I could just program it to next track and pause and the last track. So I'll link to the Fleerk because that, that makes... Now the edifiers... By the way, have we looked at this remote yet? Might as well listen to the edifiers while we're, list, while we're looking at the remote. This from Inception. The vinyl rip of Inception. Ah, oh, mute. This remote is the longest remote. It's the longest remote. It's the longest remote I've ever seen. And the bottom of it isn't flat. And you're like, well, why does that matter? Is because it looks like a remote that you would stand up and it would sit there. But it doesn't. Now, it's got like this, like it's got like a trigger. It's the longest remote. And it's the sharpest remote, too. I could cut myself on the, this is remote has, and I will clean this before I sell it on the yard sale on the Patreon. This remote has got, I don't know, fuck you, I'm a remote written all over it. Cause there's so many things that come with like little dainty remotes. I, I got the HD sixes. I got the, um, the shit, uh, fr fr wow. It's Vidar and Freya. No, I don't know. Whatever. They come with little tiny remotes. Look at this remote. Look at this remote. This is serious. 
and every button's bespoke. You could actually turn off. Did you see the power lights, by the way? Can we get the power lighting? Of course, the power light for the edifier for the edifiers is literally just that little screen down there says aux. If I put it to Bluetooth, that little screen on there is now a little Bluetooth. So that's the only power indicator that these are running. There's no blue LED, there's no white, there's no nothing. It's just a screen, a little white thing that'll say coaxial. If you hit coaxial, it'll say cox actually. There's aux, opt, and then balance, because we're gonna get to the back of these and there's balance inputs. And this is this is ridiculous. And I can unpause that, and it should unpause my phone. Unless my phone went to sleep. Maybe I had to connect. There's my phone again. Just imagine, just imagine your 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 Alexa. I don't want to say your name too loud. Just imagine your Alexa is paired with a set of these edifiers. And when you say, yo bitch, play me some hardcore goddamn reggae, then these play. So that's your power indicator. The power indicator on the swans is a red LED on the back. We're gonna get to that. Where was I? I was I was talking about the remote. Talking about the remote. Oh God, it's too early for a review. So you get next track, last track, play pause for the Bluetooth. If you buy a Flirk, a USB little receiver, and you program it to just be media keys, you can set these up to control FUBAR or whatever the hell you're using on your computer. You get four buttons here that are DSP equalizers, and their monitor is flat, and then you get classic dynamic vocal. The knobs in the back of the unit that control bass and treble, you can't adjust bass and treble, because they're physical knobs. So it's like, what? But okay. And they're very mild. Like, I was going through it, and it'll blink multiple times. Let me get back to auxiliary. It'll blink multiple times when you hit it. Okay, I'm now I'm on dynamic. Okay, now I'm on vocal. When you hit monitor, it blinks once. Okay, I'm back to flat. And that doesn't affect the knob, but the knobs are physical knobs. But the knobs are actually digital because they're controlling a DSP because there's a delay. We're going to get to it. Here's your choices. The edifiers have optical, Bluetooth, coaxial digital input, RCA, which is called auxiliary here, and the full set of XLR balanced. And here's your mute button, and here's your power. So there's your remote. So the swans come with all of this. It's like graphs and charts and beautiful wires and bags. And by the way, here are the feet for the swans, which I took off because I didn't want them to put, leave dents in the desk like these are going to have. And the edifiers come with this remote. And that changes things. Now, we are, we are officially going on hiatus from playing music for a second. And let's pull this bitch out. Um, I guess we'll do you first. You see what I mean by the holes in the desk? Do I have to unplug anything here? No, I shouldn't have to. Booyah! You have no idea how angry an attached power cable in 2017 makes me. Because the Swans pl unplugs. It's a little, little figure eight and it unplugs. This is an attached power cable. Here's your main power switch, which the remote control can power off the unit. So this is just like a breaker, like on a big subwoofer, where it'll sleep or not. Here's your balanced inputs, which I have used and you've seen in the uh, the shit review. Here's your speaker. We'll get to this. This needs a whole thing. Auxiliary in, optical in, coaxial in. Optical in means what, boys and girls? Optical in means this is a soundbar killer. Optical means put this in your living room, hook this up to your, TV, your smart TV, watch Amazon friggin' shows like Hand of God. By the way, Hand of God is an amazing show on Amazon. Go watch it. Hook this up. Soundbar killer? Yes. Have Bluetooth? Yes. $400? Holy God, will these fuck over a soundbar. Here's your auxiliaries, aka RCAs, and here is your treble, bass, and volume, or input selection, because you gotta be able to use the whole speaker without remote, in case you lose remote. So, to press in to change inputs, and I have no idea what I'm changing it to right now because it's on the front. So you gotta sort of like, this speaker, here, here's here's the cru crux, all right? Let's get to the actual point of the review. If you're putting, these are living room gods, all right? Living room gods. Hook your TV up to this, get your phone up to it, put them on stands 27 feet apart. 
Because look how fucking long this fucking fucking cable is between them, right? Look at this thing. Look at the... Uh, it's a five conductor. It's got to be 16 gauge wire. Look how hard and heavy and stupid and it looks like it's from the 70s and the color of it. But it's it's five conductor because it's running probably a common ground and then a between. I don't know why it's five conductor, but it is. So f all the other fires are five conductor left and right. And this thing is, look, it's still looped down there. Like I could still keep pulling, pulling. I could, I could pull it. How far apart do you need your speakers? Edifier? How fucking far, Chewbacca? How many cell phones did he have, Chewbacca? Was it as many cell phones as he had laptops? And can you see his ball sack? Yes. So, Edifier gives you the umbilical cord to fucking end all umbilical cords between two speakers. So, you can literally route this down speaker stands to the wall behind a fucking, over a fireplace, and then up to the other speaker, because they give you 700 miles of fucking cable. Perfect living room speakers. But, here on a desk, where Zeos is doing this review, this arrangement sucks. Cause you're literally okay. You got your computer. You bought out of fires. I want to want to volume. So you could either volume on your computer, like you can do that. You could install a big knob or an Origin G2 and, and control it through. But but there's no knob, so you have to dick around with a remote on your desk to to raise and lower the volume and turn them on and off. Because there's, there's no way to fucking I even me like like, like it's I can't. Enter the swans. <sighs> Your turn, baby. Oh. Hey, let me just attach this power cable so it's easier. See that out of fire? That's how easy that is. Let's look at the back of this. <sighs> Gold, four conductor, screw on that barely reaches to that side of the desk. This is that long. From that speaker to here, straight across, that, that's it. When I, when I set up as my center channel, this had to go over my TV in like a straight line and back. So extremely short connections between the two. Unlike the fucking edifier. Let's look at all the, the connections in the back of this. Oh, there they are. It's literally one pair of RCA ins. Ready? <sighs> the maximum potential for these speakers has been reached. And here's your on off. Well, let me plug it back in so you can see the power LED, which actually is relatively bright red LED and will shine on your wall at night and you'll be like, oh, it's red. That's it. We've reached the end of talking about the back of the swans. You start to understand why Zeos likes them. People think Zeos likes complications. I don't like complications. I like simple. I like a big ass heat sink, which these do stay warm even when you're not playing anything. So I would recommend feeling behind it to shut it off and then turning it back on. We're getting a smart power strip so that when your monitor's on, it turns these on. There are ways around, but the, can you, are you seeing the contrast now between the fucking, uh, multi, multiple levels and, and digital inputs and you got this and this and then and all these and the push button and the bluetooth built in versus speaker like this like not even an auxiliary if you wanted to add bluetooth to the swans you basically have to unplug whatever else you've got in it or start adding preamps with multiple inputs like a you know, shit sis and then you could control but then you don't want to control the so you get the bass and treble on the back of the edifier, which I was tweaking it a bit. But then on the front of the swans, you don't get power on and off, but you do get volume knob. Very quiet, very even. You low volume sounds fucking great. Volume knob, treble, which notches, stops in the middle. Bass and treble knob stop, and you're good to go. 
And I would just leave these on all the time because I would forget. And you know they're that flat when you don't touch them. So, edifiers, put them in your living room. Hook them to your TV. Hook them to your PlayStation. Hook them to your Xbox. Hook them to your goddamn tube preamp from shit because it's got XLR inputs. Hook them to anything you want. Then Bluetooth to them. Then have your friends go, yeah, Bluetooth to my speaker. They're called the S2000 Pros in my phone. And have them sound better than anything you put in your living room. But on your desk, these are the answer. These are the answer because, well, they're slightly smaller. The controls are in the front. And when you're here, that whole sound around you thing, that's where that happens. In the living room, you're not going to notice it. These are just going to kick as much as the low end on these edifiers is dumb. And you could tweak it down. It's too dumb. And it used to... and like I said, when you actually turn the bass and treble knobs, it's not instant. This is not a potentiometer in here that's feeding off. A... This is hooked up to the DSP corrections of the edifier. If I turn the bass knob like that, nothing happens. Because it's moving it too fast and it's waiting for me to pick where I want it and then it will apply the DSP correction of the audio. That's insane. It's actually delayed. It's actually... Am I on? Are we ready to play? I'm paused. B. Oh, I've got to push it to auxiliary. Auxiliary. You ready? I mean, it's not a bassy song. Not a bassy song. Perfect. Bass is up. Bass is down. Nothing changes. Even the volume control right there is sort of delayed because it's it's making corrections in a digital signal processor inside of this. I wish these provided measurements. I think they have a little less linearity to the treble, but then you could just go to tweak that up. Just, just, just a bit up. Up. Yeah, um, so which which speakers win? That's a stupid question. This whole video has been dedicated to telling you that both these speakers are fucking winners. Ugh. In in more than one sense of the word, they are winners. By the way, they both have fucking gold feet. Why do they have, like... Actually, these are gold for the swans. Those are more copper colored. Room. Desk. By the way, the angled top on these swans makes putting things on top of it impossible. And I like that, because I hate people that put shit on top of their speakers. I'm looking at you, uh, Space Sloth. Fuck off that speaker. But yet, yeah, no. I mean, th there's no loser here. Th the loser wins. There's no losers here. These are both incredible speakers that sound different, yet both great. That one works extremely well in a living room and will show up in a yard sale in the future because I don't have a need for... I'm never using it in my living room. But these, I'd always have a reason to put them on my desk. Which is why these are staying. And these, you can go to Patreon. $5 a month. It'll show up at some point. If this happens, if this review is released in January, then the February yard sale will have these. If it's released in, Mar in February, the March yard sale will have these. And it's unfortunate. I'm going to have to... I'm just going to get my money back and buy the next thing. That's what it comes down to. So, sound demos in the description. Thank you for sticking this out with me. I think I've covered everything I need to cover. Like the wood. Can we look at the real... Like, not veneer. Real wood. It's cherry and... Actually, I got a mouse. I got a mouse. I don't need to do anything. Here they are. Right now, Swans 360 and edifiers 400. So, desk, it doesn't matter. They could be the same exact price. Desk, room. What are you? Uh, solid with uh, birch. Cherry or birch, take your pick. And it's solid birch. Like you could start hitting this with an ax and it's birch. It's not a, not a veneer. It's, they look, here, I forgot this, I almost forgot to say this. 
either one of these speakers would look absolutely at home on Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg's desk. As far as looks go, those are fifth element speakers. Those are fifth element speakers. These are fifth element speakers. They brought that slight rake back, by the way, also, which um, prevents you from having to use angled foam. That's why I have it on flat foam. It also, uh, when you're farther away from it, will move the tweeter further back. So there's a sort of a time alignment thing going on. Now I think I've covered it all. Have I covered it all? I, did I unplug a thingy? I unplug a thingy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And I love these. I love both of them. But I can't keep both of them. I don't have room. So... Edifiers, you're going to go find a new home. Someone on the Patreon is going to bid on you and win and enjoy the shit out of it. And I will ship international, by the way, if you pay half. And the swans, you're going to be my default on that desk when I'm not defaulting to the S, the, the 530s and the, the phase linear. So, yeah, thank you for joining me. That wallpaper, which is adorable and it's up there, is available in the download in the description. And the Patreon is in the upper right of the description. The sound demos are both in the description. The links to these, I'll link to the big knob. I'll link to these awesome Amazon Basics RCAs, which actually inspired me to do this review because I finally got four footers. I didn't have to go licking giant cables together. And yeah, thanks. If you made it this far, you're one of the true fans. And you understand that my ramblings uh, are probably ruining your wallet, your marriage, and your health. <laughs>